Hello, and welcome to Navigating Sue's Success. Today, I'm joined by Caden Stinger of Montana Architectural Specialties, and this is a little bit of a watermark event. This is episode number 20, so Caden, thanks for joining us. Uh, you got a pretty exciting company. We talked uh, uh, before, you've got some interesting projects up. Tell us what Montana Architectural Specialties does. Yeah, so uh, Montana Architectural Specialties is a, a small rep agency here in Montana. Um, since uh, the end of 2018 and 2019, um, we began to represent uh, manufacturers in the decorative glass and glazing realm, uh, sliding door hardware, um, now representing uh, decorative hardware uh, for commercial and interior uh, design, as well as uh, uh, high-end uh, architectural metals, so blacksmithing, um, and then power lift hydraulic doors. So um, uh, kind of a wide variety, but mostly in the customs realm. So we like to, to have a lot of control over the projects. Um, we come from an artist background um, here. So we have a lot of uh, interior designers reaching out to us for consultancy, um, especially in the decorative glass and glazing realm. Wow, that's uh, super cool. And it, and uh, your team is based out of Missoula proper, correct? Yep. So Missoula proper, actually Polson. So um, born and raised here in, in Polson. Um, but a lot of our, our, our team or, or individuals that we work with, uh, a lot of our partners and customers, um, Missoula surrounding areas and uh, Kalispell. So up north. Um, any so is that as far as your reach is or are you all across the state and into nope. Northern so we're, Idaho? Yeah, we're, we're uh, Idaho, Montana, uh, Oregon, and Washington for many of our products. Um, most of the uh, projects that we work on that are uh, uh, high-end uh, glass or glazing related, um, we've done a lot of work in the Yellowstone Club um, with some amazing partners in, in Lake Glass um, out of Bozeman. So a uh, big shout out to Sean and his team. Um, they kind of keep me alive and keep me moving at times. Um, and then uh, with some of our products, we are restricted. So we're uh, to the edge of Spokane County, um, but most of our product offerings um, and some of them are, are out into uh, the Dakotas and Wyoming. So um, depending on the product specific, uh, it really uh, can be a changing uh, map for where we represent and, and which products we represent. So, yeah, you're really uh, kind of spreading out. Um... So are you scaling up? Um, so yes, we, we've taken on um, one new product in, in Bella Hardware, um, which has uh, become kind of more of our national footprint. Um, but what, at the same time, what we're trying to do is uh, we're trying to breathe more life out into the Montana, Idaho, Panhandle area where you're not seeing a lot of touched um, uh, glass and glazers, excuse me. <clears throat> and at the same time, what we're really trying to do is put our service out there in that we uh, do a lot of custom consultancy. So if you have something that comes in on a napkin, um, we want to put ourselves out there as that that right. that consultant can help uh, guide you in finding the right partner, A, in a designer, maybe for your entire home or for a specific element of your home. So is so let's talk about challenges. Um, and not to not to throw any dirty laundry in the street, but um, business owners typically love to talk about their challenges. Is marketing your challenge? Brand recognition? What what, uh, what is your challenge? Yeah. So just be being in the geographic territory that we're in, you know, not as many opportunities as say, you know, Northern and Southern California and the hotbeds of, of areas where you see a lot of design happening. Um, but what I do see is um, that brand recognition out here is very important. It's finding a foothold in, in they know what you do at first sight, you know, and being able to um, uh, provide that opportunity for them to reach into your website and have uh, clear and detailed information on what you represent, your mission statement. So it can be very hard sometimes to convey what's going on um, and yes, brand, brand identity is big, big for us here at Montana Architectural Specialties. Um, you'll see that on our website and kind of how we push out our social media. Um, we try to be very repetitious and we try to be, um, you know, always having a, a broader vision or a larger vision about our company and, and scaling uh, is obviously something that we try to do. Um, but 
I, I thank you for asking about those challenges because um, being in a geographic territory, um, it, it can be hard to be out in front of your customers all the time. So having the Absolutely. ability to penetrate socially is is amazing. Yeah, it uh, it, it is challenging. You know, people on the east and west coast in, in high population density areas, they don't get us. Um, I say that frequently on this show. They, um, um, they don't understand. Yeah, I mean, you know, what's the mileage east west across Montana? It's you know just shy of eight hundred miles, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's, so it's it's kind of crazy. And I do have I've got your website up right now. Um, I love the background of the snow and the fog blowing off of the uh, off the mountains over there yeah. in Bitter. It's really it's really cool. And it's a very sharp web website. So uh, for anybody Thank watching. You go out and and take a look at what these guys do it's uh, some really clean interesting looks both uh old style and new style so very um kind of what you want how you want it uh, kind of kind of products that you put out there um so this is this is probably a really easy one for you because it sounds like you're a rapidly evolving and adaptable kind of company what is your um what is your mantra for uh innovation and staying adaptable in uh, in the current environment yeah yeah so um i'm a huge believer in in the stoic mindset so like i'm i'm a huge investor in in believing in yourself investing in yourself and 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 developing on uh, those gut feels you know, understanding that when you feel that it's time to pivot and develop in your company, take on a, a new idea or uh, flush out the old, um, that you uh, listen to those those calls from the inside out. So my development process here, um, if I'm looking at a new product to bring in, if I'm looking at a, a, a partner, say a new partner, even, even a new customer, um, I want to know that they're wholesome in their approach. I really want to understand that that they're going to be a great partner for us here, um, not only on the development side, but that we uh, would recommend that product to anyone, that we would go out and install it in our own home, um, and that we would actually be proud of that installation. So um, I think a lot of uh, smaller companies or rep agencies will pick up 20 lines just to have a large swath of products and and for financial reasons i think sometimes that's beneficial because you're able to to have eight or ten um commission checks rolling in i tend to try to control my development through quality durability viability duplicatable functionality um fit and finish of products is a lot for me um, and so coming from the glass world and coming from a lot of custom and, and very high end products, um, detail orientation and, and, and that quality of that product is big for me. So if I'm looking to develop my lines or take on something new, uh, have someone install my products out in the field, um, it's very, very important to me that I meet these individuals, that I hear their backstory and that there's something there for me to attach my wagon to, so to speak. Yeah. I love that. The, uh, the instinctual, um, part, but more so the, the, um, quality part and qualifying your, your clients and your providers, um, because there's something that you can believe in. And you mentioned something else about specifically about the social media and, and website that, I think is often overlooked and really important is is putting out there what your what your company values and your mission is, uh, what your mission statement is. I, I think that's a key key piece that a lot of people miss. So I really appreciate that um, that uh, that you acknowledge that. Um, what's a what does the future look like for MAS? What, uh, yeah. um, what do you, where are you at in 12 months and then 36 months? So, um, I just brought my son on, um, who's 21. Um, so he uh, got a basic education in, uh, you know, out there in the field of construction to understand kind of the grassroots of, of what it takes, um, to uh, pull a tape and, and set a stud. Um, there's a lot of value in that. I did that myself. Um, so you know, practical application is huge for me. 
Um, then I brought him on to manage projects, better understand um, social media. And, and since he is of a younger mindset, he was able to to really uh, turn me on to some things that that we can do with algorithms to be better uh, uh identified out there and what's really yeah. neat is now we are um you know kind of running full steam uh he's able to help me not only on the social media side but he's really worked into strategizing how we better suit our clients how we better service them what we educate them with so that when they're using our product um, they can go into a home and say confidently this is a great product um we have you know proper literature we have web presence again that they can go through our website and find all the information that they're looking for so building a backstop um, with my company is probably going to be the biggest thing um, moving into 2024 is building an informational backstop so that when they are here they feel welcome and, and the website when they're interacting with our people they feel very welcome and when we, we respond we're, we're very responsive so um and what I mean by backstop is it becomes that that you build a base and then you build a fence above that to catch, you know, and, and some sure. stuff goes over the backstop. We all we all know that. And so um, we just have not been great at maintaining that information and keeping the education out there. So, you know, by way of educational presentations, product introductions, um, we've done that in the past where we're in a glazing contractor's office, we're feeding them donuts and coffee and we're educating them and we really need to reinvest in that in 2024. So that's a, that's, it's not um, totally unique, but it's kind of a lost art and a lost philosophy of you're keeping the experience. And, and I use the term experience intentionally. Um, you're creating an experience for your contractors and your customers that's personalized. Um, it's kind of funny because like 10 minutes before we got on this interview, I took a spam call and it was totally an AI recording and it had asked me a question. I'd give it a response and it would regurgitate my response to get something else. And I'm like, how impersonal is this? You know, I kept it on the phone for about eight or eight or 10 minutes, but it was, it, it was kind of spooky, honestly. So having a genuine person to person, you know, feeding them donuts and coffee uh, Absolutely. experience is, uh, is, is that small business in the West. And that's yeah. the part that I think people don't get out in the urban centers, you know, um, great that you had your son working with you. So he's graduated to running the smart end of the tape measure instead of the dumb end. Yes. <laughs> well, and you, you've nailed it there. And it's for me trying to allow him um, the ability at, at what I call the new balance of work is you want to be there for your children. So being out on the job site for 10 hours a day, that works. And, and as a single dad, a lot of that stuff can happen. There's a transition in not only your education and your ability that can allow you to make the same money in a position of consultancy or in a position where you're, you're feeding information and you're providing information to those parties that, that need that. So for him, um, I, I think it's going to be unique. There's going to be a hybrid model to what we do here to help him really choose his own path. And it's, it's, uh, we deal with some really custom products. So he may end up at one of these manufacturers, you know, working for that team because of his ability to really turn a product or, or uh, flip a specification from one product to another. Um, and, and they find value in that. And that's really why, where I've found success in myself and where I came from uh, prior to, to being at Montana Architectural Specialties. Yeah, it's... Uh... What I, I, and I really appreciate this, and I think this is important for people that might watch this, is that you you don't have any boundaries set up for yourself. You, you have a you have a per, pretty specific um, area that you're operating in right now, but you don't have you haven't set any barriers for saying, you know, uh, hey, I, we could go over here if we chose to intentionally, right. or or we could expand into this, and that's important. So we asked about. I asked about scaling and uh, and you know what you what you're going to look like in the future, which is uh, kind of limitless. But are you hiring? 
Yeah, so we're always looking for uh, qualified candidates for project management, uh, as well as social media. Um, as I mentioned before, our reinvestment into this is going to be, I think, kind of a two twofold investment as we move out into the year. Um, but we are looking for for qualified candidates. I would prefer that they would be in Montana, but that's not limited because I know the hybrid work model and, and working remote is is uh, just as viable. So um, yes, anyone um, can always reach out to me, uh, Caden at montanaarchspec.com. Um, and you can always just uh, send me a message or even call the number that's listed on the website. I will always pick up my phone. Um, I pride myself in being available at almost any hour. Um, so we might have to um, yeah. talk about that off camera. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've got a job for you, right? <laughs> well, well, I was I, I skipped over the question about work life balance. Um, yeah. Since we're yeah. there, um, why don't you tell me a little bit about how you manage your your work life balance? So, um, work life balance is really uh, force fed by something else that I have um, with my family and with the work that I do. So um, I work as well as a national uh, team member for Special Light Inc. Uh, based out of Decatur, Michigan. So I'm the architect engagement specialist for that team. I deal predominantly with AIA presentations and engagement educational sessions with architects across the nation. Um, so we've got multiple teams of reps under us selling um, high-end doors, um, you know, really value-based products. Um, and then I have the rep agency here in Montana. So there's a balance in that uh, by itself, um, as well as uh, auto racing. So with my family, wow. we've got a lot of uh, we've got a lot of uh, plate spinning, um, especially during the summertime. Um, my children race quarter midget race cars, and then we race all the way up to uh, modified cars uh, that my father races um, here uh, in the Mission Valley or. Uh, previously in the Mission Valley and now um, more in the Idaho or state line Idaho um, areas um, where we're uh, planning on participating again in 2024. So um, there's a lot of work that we do uh, to try to um, not only maintain a structure of this is how much we need to give um, and then at the same time um, we have a legacy in motorsports that we owe it to our forefathers and my grandfather to, to carry the torch for. So um, with a machine shop that my father owns that kind of backs us um, as well as um, many uh, uh, individuals representing our team, um, it becomes a, uh, uh, I, I want to say it's a balance, but it becomes a heavy lift at some times. And what I like to define it as is uh, we turn burdens into ballast. And so um, the burden can I'm, hit you. I'm going to I'm going to rip that off. And you you, you can do it. Turn, turn turn your burden into ballast, and once you're balanced out, then you can move forward again. Um, and that might be one of our uh, you know key terms or key words that we use in 2024 with our team here is it may seem like a burden now, but once you find that it's ballast, um, it'll help you move forward in that balance. And so. Um, that might be the definer right there for you, Jeff. Yeah, and and that answers the the last question that I would have asked you is what's the one thing that uh, you would tell a a aspiring entrepreneur or somebody that was struggling with their company is uh, turn the burden into ballast. Any uh, closing thoughts before we uh, before we close this up? No, just thank you for the opportunity, Jeff. You know, this is a, a unique deal. I've watched, I think, uh, almost all of the episodes now. I'll go back now that I've participated and make sure that I watch all the, re the, the remaining episodes. Um, I think what you're doing is very noble because it gives a guy like me a voice and a, a you know, a spot to um, speak my piece a little bit about why I am successful and why I feel like uh, Montana is the greatest place on earth to live. Yeah, um, and and I find that a lot. And again, that's uh, that's actually my inspiration for doing this series and uh, and doing what I do as a business coach for uh, creating a healthy uh, a healthy community through healthy economics um, in uh, rural agrarian uh, Montana, right? So that's I mean, true. I'll just throw it out there: it's minus six and it's still snowing. So for all of you in 
the southern climates and everything like that. It takes a different kind of person to run a successful business in Montana. Um, so uh, uh, hats off to uh, to Caden and his team and all of our entrepreneurs on navigating to success. And I hope you'll join us for the uh, next episode. Take care, everybody.